Okay, everybody, how's it going? Uh, we're going to go ahead and start a new video this week. And in this video, we're going to be talking about text in After Effects. Um, After Effects works with text just like any, pretty much any other um, uh, editing software. Um, it's not meant for writing. It's just meant to use to give information. And you can do some really cool effects with the text tools um, here in After Effects. Uh, the closest thing similar to what we can do here would be after, uh, Photoshop um, because it has a lot of the same features. Uh, but what uh, After Effects does is that you can use the uh, animation um, controls and uh, some really cool effects that you can do with it. Um, I have included other videos in the weekly lecture so you can, you can look at other things to do and uh, what the possibilities are with um, with the text tool but in um, after effects and in, in broadcasting in general um, doing text animation is one of the most common things you'll do it's one of the easiest things to do too and it has one of the best looking outcomes um, it's really the main part of motion graphics is to relay information in a very fun and interesting way uh, the way you bring in the text the way you uh, manipulate the text and the what uh, the different fonts and all the other things that you can do with it makes what motion graphics for commercials for broadcasting for whatever uh, what makes it really interesting so let's go ahead and get started uh, we're going to go ahead and create a new composition and we're going to call this animated text okay we'll leave pretty much everything the same we just want to make sure we're doing HD 720 which is uh, a basic um, and pretty good video resolution. Uh, it's 1280 by 720. There it is. Duration doesn't matter because we're just playing around with uh, the text tool. Okay, we're gonna hit okay. So we're gonna just make sure I can see my project bin available over here. Now the text tool is located right here. It's the T. And as you'll notice that the shortcut for that is the control T. Because if you press T by itself, it brings up the opacity of whatever layer you're working on. Uh, so if you click and hold, you have horizontal and vertical type tool. Okay, so we're going to main, uh, mainly use the horizontal one. And what you'll do is that you'll see your cursor turn into this uh, different arrow. It's black. And if you click anywhere on your composition, you get this red line immediately down in your timeline. You get the text layer option. Okay, so right now there's nothing written here as far as what the name is. And obviously there's nothing written here in our composition. So we'll go ahead and create something. Let's just say hello, for example. Now, uh, if you press the enter on the regular keyboard, what it'll do, it'll go, it'll go down to the next uh, line, okay? Uh, backspace will bring it back to where it was. If you press enter on your numpad, or if you just click out here, it will close the text tool. Okay, so let me explain what that does. Okay, I'm actually gonna delete this and start all over. Uh, when you select the text tool uh, right up there, again, it's the letter T or control T, and you click here in your composition, right now it is activated. This text layer is activated, and so we can type in whatever we want. Again, I'm just going to type in hello, and I can continue typing like this. Press enter, the regular enter, and you can keep on typing, and it'll just keep going and going and going until you're done. I'm just going to hit the backspace to get back to hello right there. Now to close it, you press the enter on your numpad or just click out. Okay, so when you click out, you are done typing. Now you can do other things to it. If you need to go back to make a correction, maybe you misspelled it or you want to type in something else, you can have your text tool, text tool selected still. Click inside these bounding boxes. See these red boxes all around the word hello? Click inside there. It will activate this layer once again so you can write in whatever it is you want to write or make a correction. Uh, you don't want to say hello. You want to say how are you or whatever you want to do. Okay. Um, notice that it will move off screen as you type. You can just, once you're done, we can move it back in. Uh, but actually keep it to hello for now. Press enter. Use your move tool or your selection tool to move it around. Now it's very important to take note. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see the word a little better. Here it is. Uh, when you zoom in, you get some pixelation, nothing to worry about. We can just always zoom out. Uh, what you notice here in these bounding boxes is this pivot point. Okay, this is very important. Uh, this is where things will rotate from. So if you use the rotate tool, you can rotate it like this. So this works like 
anything else in After Effects, like an image or a video or a shape layer or whatever. Uh, you can use your move tool, like I was moving it before, like this. Uh, just like any other thing, if you press S for scale, we have the scale option so we can scale it. Notice it's scaling from the anchor point. This is this little point right here. Okay, it's scaling from there. See that? All right, I'll type in 100 here to put it back to normal. Use press T for uh, opacity. And you can lower the opacity so it could be completely transparent or like gone, a zero semi-transparent, like around 50%, and so on and so on. So if you had an, an image in the background where um, you wanted to put the, the text on and it's just lightly there, you can just lower the opacity that way. Uh, R is rotation. You'll see that it'll rot rotate around that pivot point, the anchor point right there. See that? Okay. And then the position is just moving it around. And we can go ahead and hit the stopwatch, animate it, and do something fun, something like this. If we had it, um, maybe place right here. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger, just so, so we can see it better. And here's the position. It uh, when you animate, uh, wherever this pivot point is, is the source of the animation, the source of the movement. So sometimes it's work. Uh, it's uh, really useful to work backwards in After Effects. So let's say I know I want at four seconds, uh, right about there. It can be a little off, a little off, a little frames there. I want it to end right here. Okay, so then on position, I'll hit the stopwatch right there. Then I'll go back to someplace earlier. I can go all the way back to zero, maybe just before two seconds, and move it off camera like this. And automatically, the key tick will be formed or the keyframe right there. And you see that when you hit play, the hello will come in at a certain speed and stop right there. Now, to make it a little more interesting, we can uh, click on this um, this key tick here, right click, keyframe assistant, and we're gonna do easy ease in right there. So that key tick changed to like a little arrow. And what will happen is that it will slow down as it comes to the end there. So it didn't come to an abrupt stop, uh, abrupt, uh, an abrupt stop. It will look a little bit better. So just come straight in there like that. And by judging the animation, Maybe you want it a little faster. So you can just move your key ticks closer. The closer they are, the faster it will be. And it will go in very quickly like that. Maybe it's too fast. Find a sweet spot. Find the spot that you like it the best. And you can move it in. And also remember that you can always change the the way it comes in. Right now it's a straight line. Maybe I want it to come in as a little curve right here. Okay. And as soon as, as, soon as you change that line, that curve right there, you can see the BZA handles come up, so then we can always uh, adjust it like this. Maybe adjust this one too, so that it slides in. Before it had a kind of like a little hill that has to climb over. Let's have it just kind of ease in right there. Hit play, and see it swoops in right there. Nice. We can also change the rotation at this point too. So let's uh, come over here and press R for rotation. And we know where it's going to end, so it's going to be uh, around four seconds, around there. We're going to stop it there. Okay, turn on the stopwatch. We wanted that, and then right about here. Again, working backwards sometimes is very useful. You can use the rotate tool to make this a little easier. Uh, just take that, and right about here, you can maybe have it climb the hill, and then let's work all the way backwards. So right about here, we want it to kind of like f uh, follow the line, so it turns. So right about there, and a little higher. You kind of see where it's like tipping off a little bit, and you can fix it right there. And maybe this doesn't matter; it's off screen, but you know why not? Just go ahead and put it in there, and then follow it. You know, scrub along the timeline. See how it goes up a little bit right there. That's fine. We can go ahead and fix that. Make that correction more or less like right there, so it slides in. Uh, being off camera, but it's okay. So right about there. And it turns. See, it turns a little late. So then we want to maybe copy this. Now, I don't. Um, we can copy the key ticks by selecting the one we want to copy. So, for example, this one. And I want it to kind of flatten out a little bit sooner. So if you just select that, hit, hit uh, Control C, and then Control V, and it, we just copied this key tick to this time 
right here by where the indicator is at. So wherever I place this, it will add the new key tip right there. So we hit play, we'll see it kind of like swoop in, but you know, and it moves along that curve. Uh, or I would go in there and maybe adjust the timing a little bit, uh, maybe play around with these key ticks till I can get a better flow of the movement, something like that. Maybe it should happen sooner. You know, whatever it is that you think will work best just by moving the text like that. Okay. Remember um, in the ball animation video, we can turn on the blur for the composition and the blur on the layer and it'll create uh, just some nice little blur effect. So we can hide some little, uh, little mistakes here and there. So it just comes in, slides right in, just like that. Very easy. Okay. Let's go ahead and delete this and again, start a new one. And again, text tool or control T. And again, I'm going to say hello. Okay. Now what I want to show you, I'm going to use the move tool. I want to make sure that I'm selected on that just because I don't want to make any kind of changes. Um, and if you grab any of these bounding boxes, you can change the shape, the size, hold down shift. It will do it proportionally like that. Just like anything else in uh, After Effects. Um, <clears throat> right over here, if you can't see this, you would have to go to a uh, window, make sure the character is visible. But right over here, this um, this tab, let's, let's scooch this over a little bit so we can see it a little bit better. Okay. So here is pretty much um, everything we need to do to change the the type font, uh, the topography of this of this. Uh, word right here that we have this is very similar to what you may see in other software again like photoshop uh, right up here where it says sensory gothic uh, we have if you just click on that tab you can run through all the fonts you have you can choose the one that best suits your project so if we would use this one for example or change it to whatever you want okay you can maybe a little more elegant um, if you're going to Something more simple, you know, or pixelated like that, um, or you know, creative like this. Uh, then you have the type of font it would be, or where you can change it to bold. Not all of the fonts have that option. Let me go to something that's a little more common. I'll use um, Arial, which is very common. And down here, you'll see that you have different modes for it. So you can do narrow italic or bold. We do it that way. Um, here we can choose the color. Okay, so you can change it to red, or blue, or green, or whatever color you choose. Um, this option right here, right behind the color, is the outline or the stroke. Okay, when you see this uh, little line here, this red line, that means that there is nothing on it right now. So if we were to click on that, you can see that that turns off the fill right here i'm going to put it back to green and then if we click on this one right now it's black but if we can change it to a red okay and what is it increase it right here see these little lines are here that increases the stroke around the uh, your font your font color so you can change this to whatever color you choose okay white black whatever again it depends on what your background is so like earlier I was saying that um, you can change the the opacity of it um, anytime you add a a fill or some kind of um, outline it depends on your background okay so if you have a white background you're not going to use a white stroke. If you have a black background like this one, for example, we change it to street black, it doesn't really change anything. Now, what it does change is the font itself because I am just filling it in with a, a bigger stroke. Um, or we can turn it off. Okay, and right now, with that line through it, that means there is no stroke uh, or no outline around the, around your font. Uh, this uh, smaller T to the capital T here, that's your font size. So you have two options. You have the options of changing the scale or the actual font size right here. 
And now you gotta do is just hover your mouse over the, the numbers and you can click drag left and right and it'll change the size. You can actually also pick one like that or just again, scale it up. This, uh, these two options over here changes the, uh, right now you can't really see this one because I need another line. I'll come back to that in a minute. This one is the kerning, okay? And basically it just separates the letters. So you can put them right on top of each other and you can move them out like this, all right? Uh, this one, let me actually write something. I'm gonna use um, T, the text tool, and come in there to activate again. I'm gonna just go hello, hi. Okay, and let's uh, scale it down so we can see the letters. And we'll move this up, okay? And then this right here, what it does is that it'll move the lines, the spacing between the lines, like this, okay? Now, um, down here, uh, again, this is the height. Everything here is very um, uh, custom. Okay, you can do a lot of stuff to this. This is the width, all right? Um, this is the placement of that anchor point. You see where the anchor point is right here? So where I move the anchor point is where it's gonna be. So if I want it right in the middle, I can move it there. This goes, so that was the up and down, and this is left and right. You can see how it just it changes that a bit. And then you have all these other options that you can play around with later on to see what they do. This will turn everything bold. This will turn everything capitalized and so on and so on. Okay. So uh, a lot of your adjustments for your font is done here, especially the type of font you're looking for. You can change it to whatever one. Um, you can also download new fonts, uh, wherever you get your fonts from a uh, Duff font, uh, com is a good place to get new font and it's very important that you use the correct font for the style project you're using so that you're not um, just relying on the basic font. You wanna have a variety of uh, different looks and different typography that makes it um, uh, appealing to your client and to your customers. So you wanna have that there. As a reminder for this little um, anchor point, this little pivot point, if you come to this tool called the pan behind or more commonly known as anchor point tool, if you click on that, you can click and drag this wherever you want. Okay. And then you can place it here. You can place it up here. You can place it right here in the middle of the O so that when you rotate it, it rotates from the O and hello like this. Okay. And then everything else is very similar to how you would animate um, anything else just like in the ball animation you can do the same thing with the text all right let's delete that and i want to start fresh again let's go ahead and type in hello now you'll notice that it retained the same um the same options i did before uh, we'll go ahead and go bigger now the next thing i want to show you is over right over here called the effects and presets and there's an option right over here called text if you just Click on that. Um, sorry, not there. Uh, <laughs> animation presets, right here. Okay, and this is text is what I was looking for. And if you click on that, you have these folders here that these are pre-animated effects or presets, what we like to call them, that can be done for you. Um, and there's a video that I have posted that will uh, show you how to manually do some of these things. But these are done for you here. So for example, animate in, if you open up that folder, we have different options. All you have to do to use these is to click and drag it onto your layer, okay? Now normally where you leave your um, time indicator is where this preset animation will begin. So if I'm gonna move back here, it was at two. You'll see that once I get past two, here it comes spiraling in and then it'll stop, just like that. Okay, I'm gonna undo. Okay, now just uh, keep in mind, I'm gonna actually bring that spiral or center spiral back on. All right, when you do this, I want you to open up your layer. You're gonna see text, open that up again. And right here are the animations. You can see where it's happening. Okay, this happening on the spiral and fade in options right there. So if you want it to happen sooner, or if you want the spiral to end sooner, you can just move these keyframes like that and it'll stop sooner. If you want it to be slower and have the fade in slower, maybe the fade in happens a little bit after the, sp the spinning, 
So it kind of already begins like that. See how much slower it is. Okay, so all, it's all right there. All right. If you, um, uh, I delete the whole thing just to start over uh, because I want you guys to, uh, you know, be aware of everything that we're working on. I want to make sure that we're reviewing everything again. Hello. And we're going to move it here in the middle. Come over to your effects and presets option. Again, if you can't find it, it's right here. Effects and presets. It'll pop up. And we're looking for, I'm going to close everything to show you where it was. Uh, let's go straight to the back. It's the very first option where it says animation presets. And you click that open. And you look for the text here. Okay. And then we have different options. We have a lot of different cool little effects that you can look at. <clears throat> so if you wanted to do one where it's drop it by character, for example, just click. Oh, actually, let me move my timeline so it's a little sooner. Uh, click and drag it. Again, it's going to begin where um, your time indicator is. Notice that it moved up. Okay, so we can fix this so it's off camera, but I want to show you what it looks like first. Okay, it comes in by character, so every letter comes in. Again, come over here. Now, if you want a shortcut to get to the key text quickly, just press, uh, make sure you have the, the layer selected, press U, and U will show you whatever has uh, animation on it. So there it is, okay? Now, what we can do is first, we can move it faster. So it comes in quicker, boom, 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 like that. And then if you go to that key tick and we can uh, play around with this option here, we can say, you know, I want it maybe to start a little bit later like this. Um, also, if you just need to see the whole thing, you can open it up. Let's open up everything. There it is. All, all your little aspects are here, okay? Uh, this here, this position, we can move it off camera right there on that key tick, all right, and it'll come in right there, just like that. Okay. Again, I'm just going to go, now, if you don't like any of this, on the animator option, you can just delete that. You can delete all, uh, if you, sorry, I'm too far. Uh, on the text, the animator is what we need to get rid of. Um, you can always undo or start afresh. Uh, we can do fade up lines right here and it'll come in like that slowly very easy and if you had more written so let's go ahead and make and uh, make a new one all together and I'm gonna actually have more lines on this so I'll, I'll put hello enter we're gonna scale this down position it like this and we'll make it a little bit smaller there it is it's just so it fits in the screen a little bit better and right about there again presets and uh, let's play with Whatever, it doesn't really matter. You can randomize it and see what it does. You'll see that when you hit play, it's going to do that effect. Again, to make your adjustment, go inside your layer. Uh, we're going to look at the text. There's some options there. Go to animator. Open up all these little things to make sure you get to it. Easy way to quickly get to it, press U. Okay, so you can do whatever you want to it. And then again, you may have to open up more to see what else is in there and all this. Okay. This is very important to go into the position. If we go back to that first frame position is not in this right spot. Let's move it off to the side a little bit more Then hit play. And you'll see that will come in from really far away on that side. Again, move your key text. So it maybe comes in quicker. Like that. And you can add your blurs to it. So it has even a better effect. It looks like it's rapid fire or some kind of like um, uh, some futuristic thing right there. Okay. 
Uh, so you can do all that. Now, um, I want to take you to uh, right here in animation where it says browse presets. Click that. And that would open, oh, excuse me. Uh, not right now. Uh, that would open the bridge of Adobe. Now, the bridge is a piece of software that connects um, software uh, from Adobe to each other. So it'll connect Photoshop to After Effects and things like that. Okay. And, um, sorry, let me close this. Okay. So uh, when you hit the bridge uh, preview here, where it says, let me show you again the animation browse presets, it would open this. It will take you to this folder, which contains previews of different presets. So if you don't know what these things are over here, back in your effects and presets tab, uh, if you don't know what they are, um, and you just you don't wanna figure it out by clicking and dragging every single one of them, when you look in here in your bridge, and it's kind of confusing because they're the same color, so it's here, you just look at the BR. Uh, if you see this folder says text, just click on that, double click. And then these folders are these folders here. Okay, they're all right there. So let me close, let me move this a little bit out of the way. Okay, let me, all right, so these folders here are these folders that you're seeing here. So when you hit animate in, for example, let me just double click on that, here are all the different presets in preview form so you can decide which one you want to use first. So the first one spiral, the center spiral, see how it is right there? That was the first one I used. Uh, this one here, fade up characters, each character fades in. We have random shuffle, they come in randomly like this. We'll have spin in by word like that, and so on. Go back to text, you have enemy out. And what that does is that it takes away the text. So enemy in brings in text, enemy out takes out the text. Uh, what's good though, is that you can actually reverse it. So you can use these effects as a way to bring them in as well and vice versa. Uh, blurs, so you have these that have kind of like a ghostly effect. This one also comes in kind of like a bullet train. It's kind of, you, you're probably seeing it slow because of my screen recorder but when you practice this um, on your own computer you'll see it better uh, and so on and so on you can look at these later um, now some of the other videos i'm posting on the lecture section on uh, brightspace will include other things other projects you can do um, and what i want you to, to work on is just by first getting uh, familiar with uh, the text the text tool uh, what you can do with it. Actually, I'm going to delete this before I end this video and come back up to the text tools to show you the vertical type. So you can click there and what we'll do is just, you can write vertically like this. And this can go in. So if you need it uh, to come in vertically like that, everything's the same. You can change the spacing. Sorry, I don't want like spacing there. So it looks uh, a little neater whatever it is, but your text tool has horizontal and vertical. Okay. So that's it for today. Uh, practice using the text tool, use different uh, fonts and uh, learn the, the character uh, tab here and also get familiar with all the text uh, presets. Um, again, you can go to animation, browse presets. It'll bring up the bridge software where you can view all the presets that have um, that uh, were previously made for After Effects. And then you can always go and manipulate them to your liking for your project. Okay, that's it for this week. Talk to you later. Bye.